you what I'm talking about. It goes out to whatever you have configured here. Okay, so the IP settings that you have configured on your network card. Here I've got 192.168.1.201. The DNS server is actually pointing to itself for DNS name resolution in this case. Okay, so that's who your preferred name server is. That's what we see right here. The default server, we've got the name and the IP address. Okay, as we add the other systems to the network, we'll be able to test this out a little bit further and show you what I'm talking about here. But you can do just general queries. Uh, if I wanted to type out SRV1 and find the IP address for it, hit enter and, and it reveals that. Now, if I want to find the IP address for client1, I would type client1 in as well. Okay, but as you can see, it can't find that actual uh, client1 because client1 does not have a record inside my DNS zone yet. Okay, see client1 here, we get this error message, cannot find client1. Well, we can't find client1 because it does not exist within the binandbrady.com zone here. I would need to create a host record and also a PTR record for client1. Okay, so that's why we don't see it yet. And we'll get to that point, you know, a little bit later in this lab. Okay, so to get out of this, we're right now in an NSLOOKUP subcommand. You notice here we've got this caret sign. If you run a normal DOS command from here, something like a uh, DIR, if you're familiar with that, doesn't list anything. Okay, so to get out of this NSLOOKUP subcommand, you first type exit. That takes you back to the command prompt. If you want to get rid of the command prompt altogether, type exit again. Okay, and that loses the command prompt. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close down DNS now. And now we're going to take a look at connecting over to the other machines and joining them to the actual domain. So first things first, let's get back to client one and we'll start from there. Okay, so we're going to connect over to SRV11 first. Log on. And here we're going to join this computer to the domain. So to do this, and once again, this computer right now is a standalone server. And I can define it as a standalone server because I can go to the properties of it, go to the network identification tab, and I see here that it's in a workgroup named workgroup. Okay, it's not a member of a domain right now. If it's a member of a domain, it's considered a member server. If it's a domain controller, I would not even be able to get into this screen here. Okay, it would be disabled here. This would be grayed out. And that would mean the Active Directory database is installed here. That's not what's happening. I'm not installing the Active Directory database. I'm simply saying I want this computer to be a member of the club, okay, a member of the domain. And the purpose behind a member server, if you're not quite sure, we don't want all of our systems in the network to be domain controllers. Okay, domain controllers take up extra resources. They need to be secured. Okay, so member servers typically, they're gonna they're gonna be more member servers in a network than domain controllers in a typical network, and they usually run services like file services email servers, web servers, things along those natures. Domain controllers tend to just be domain controllers. Sometimes run other services such as DNS or WINS, okay, but your resource intensive services tend to be member servers, database servers, file servers, okay, email servers, those are your member servers. Okay, so I'm going to go here, go to the properties of SRV11, network identification, I'm going to go to the properties tab again, and here I'm going to specify the name of the domain I'm going to join. Okay, and it's going to be benandbrady.com. I click OK. And right away I get this pop up for a username and password. If you get an error message here, uh, that happens. And a lot of times, well, a lot of times, all the time, it has to do with you not being able to connect to the actual domain. So you may have a physical uh, connectivity problem. A lot of times I'll have people who have changed their IP addresses on their systems so they're on a different network ID. Okay, you need to be able to ping the system, reach the system, and that's what I can do here. So now I need to supply a username and password. In this case, okay, and for the most part, you need to supply a domain administrator username and password. Okay, a domain administrator username and password. And it's not a local administrator name and password. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, we're sitting here on SRV11. If I go to the local users and groups here on SRV11, okay, you see I've got administrator here. We're not talking about this account here. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the administrator account on the domain. Okay, so if that username and password happens to be different than what we see here, you have to supply a different username and password. Okay, so right now 
I'm entering in the domain username or the domain administrator's username and password. Click OK. 